Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the solemnity of Epiphany of the Lord. The word Epiphany means manifestation or revelation. Therefore, today we celebrate the manifestation and revelation of Jesus as the light of the nations and as the Messiah and Lord of all peoples, Jews and Gentiles. The Gentiles are symbolized by three magi who made, who made great sacrifices to seek to find Jesus. We as Christians are also called to make sacrifices to our name, energy, and resources in seeking after Jesus and making our relationship with him the main priority of our lives. All of them can be brought light the Messiah and Lord. Please silence Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Roberto, and the preachers is Father Francis. Happy New Year to all of you. We begin this Mass, we begin this new year in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
my brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you. Well, our world, our secular world, has moved on from Christmas. They're already talking about Kwanzaa and Valentine's Day and so on. But as Catholics, we, we still are gathered around the manger. We still celebrate this amazing belief that God became a human being. And with this Feast of the Epiphany, we move into this phase now that to remember that Jesus was not born just for the Jews, but for all people of all nations of all times. He is the light of the nations. He is Lord of all. So with that realization, we come before him humbly as we begin this new year of uncertainties and say, Lord, it's all yours. I'm all yours. And let us give to God most of all what he wants, our hearts. We pray together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light for some. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall pour by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look above. They all gather and come to you. You come from our far, and your daughters and arms and of the nations. Then you shall be radiant of what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied hour before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans and caramel that fills you. Dromedaris, Promedian, and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
Our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as is now heard, revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I may go to and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. 
Dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Gospel of the Lord. Well, we did it. We got out of the year 2021 and we're still alive. <laughs> so, this Sunday is called Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany, Epiphany is the climax of the Christmas celebration. At Christmas, we heard of the birth of Jesus. We heard, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's Sighed and has revealed him. Christmas is described very clearly in this uh, prologue. It comes from St. John, chapter 1, one of the options for readings, gospel readings on Christmas Day. Today, Epiphany, something else happens. Not only is Jesus revealed to be Savior, he is revealed to be Savior of every nation, each nation, all peoples, each person, no exceptions. God's mercy goes to every single one of us. Now, this is very unusual. Uh, the prophets had talked about the nations seeing the light of God through Jerusalem, but not that they would re be recipients of his mercy. This is now what Epiphany is about, that revealed to all the nations of the world, to each nation and all peoples and each person, that the child born is the savior of all. So this solemnity is about something very unusual happening. Um, we read in this a gospel passage from St. Matthew, that there are some unexpected visitors to Jerusalem who are the Magi from some place east, perhaps Persia or some other place. And they are not like the people of Jerusalem. They have different kind of clothing. Uh, they speak different kind of languages. They ask a very disturbing question, disturbing if you're, you happen to be King Herod, the question, where is to be born the king of the Jews? We have come to do him homage. And Herod, of course, is deeply troubled. And if Herod is deeply troubled, you better bet everyone in Jerusalem is deeply troubled with him. They don't like to see their king troubled because he'll take it out on them. So uh, the king demands of the chief priests and the elders, the scribes of the people, where is this king to be born? And they quote the scriptures, the prophets that say, in Bethlehem. So King Herod asks, or he tells, the does, king doesn't ask people, he tells um, the, the magi, go to Bethlehem, and after you have found where he is, come back and tell me. So the magi go, 
And here is something else that's very strange. And it's strange enough that these odd people come from far away, but the star that they had seen at its rising precedes them. Don't ignore this very strange description. The star goes before him and rests over the place where the child is born, where he is. None of us have ever seen anything like that. This is just beyond expectations. It's very, very strange. And they enter into that house, and there they find the child and his mother, Mary. So they open up their gifts, the gifts that proclaim the divine origin of this baby, that he is the Son of God, and that he will make the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, and um, that he has come, that he has come to set us free. These are very, very unusual gifts, and the meaning of the gifts is very clear. This child has a mission to be the Messiah, and that Messiah will suffer for us. Now, this brings us to a personal meaning for each one of us, because Mercy is the response to suffering. The response of goodness to suffering is mercy. And who suffers? Those of us who are in sin. Now, Father Roberto has heard many confessions, many, many years of confessions. He's heard it all. And sin is actually very predictable. Uh, The sins I committed in 2021 are a pretty good indication of the sins I will commit in 2022. When people come to me at confession and say, Father, I always confess the same things, I tell them, Welcome to the club. (laughs) This is why God calls sinners to be dispensers of his mercy, because we have learned of God's mercy to us. Hence, we have compassion to to give that uh, gift freely to everyone who comes asking for absolution. Welcome to the club. We are pretty uh, predictable in how we sin. The same sins and the same ruts that uh, we've, we've experienced in, in our families, in our uh, culture, in uh, all my history are the ones that continue. And they mean that we suffer. We are suffering under that. And God has come in mercy to forgive us. And he has given us the most unexpected thing. He has given us what no one would ever expect, his own son. So sin is predictable, but God's grace completely um, goes beyond our expectations. God's grace always surprises us when we experience. We may know in our heart, the idea, or in our head, I mean, um, um, what, the, what the concept is, but experiencing it personally is always a rebirth. You know, we were reborn in baptism, we were reborn in many ways, and we continue to be reborn, and let us never stop being reborn in that gift of God's mercy. So that leads us to a peculiar story, a part of the story about the Magi. Because the Magi were told by Herod 
um, come back to me and tell me where the child is. But an angel warns them in a dream not to do that, not to go see Herod. And so St. Matthew ends this uh, event, tell the, the account of this event by telling us they went back to their country by another way. May 2022 be a year when we will allow God's grace to come into where we suffer from repeated sins, from our fears, from all the things that keep us locked in, and God will guide us by his grace, and he will always surprise us. And by walking in God's grace that we meet in this epiphany that he has come for each and every, without exception, person, no matter who you are, what you did, how many times you did it, he forgives you and gives you new life. Let us now enter into the new year by a different way. As a people of faith, as God's people, we stand and profess our faith in the God who is light. And we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became, for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this feast of the Epiphany, when the light of Christ was revealed to all the nations of the world, we turn to God our Father confident that he will hear and answer our prayers. For God's holy church, that as we make Jesus the center of our lives, our light may beckon a rich diversity of peoples to come and be heirs with us, members of one body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a world that in all those places of darkness, the light of Jesus might be manifested to transform hatred, violence, fear, and anxiety to peace, love, hope, and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued spiritual awakening of St. Dominic Paris, that we, like the Magi, might be willing to make the journey of the discipleship and seek Jesus with all our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who make seeking meaning and purpose of their lives, that in the end of their searching, they will come to recognize Christ as the source of wisdom and light in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that God would reward and protect from harm our first responders, media workers, caretakers, and essential workers, and for an end to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all our sick may experience God's strength and healing, and that the Lord may let this face shine upon those who have, who have died and give them eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Leslie Robbins for healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayers and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all nations and peoples, you continually show us your love by listening to our prayers. May we seek your Son, Jesus, the light of the world throughout our lives and find in him peace in our hearts and eternal life with you. We ask this in his name, Jesus the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ, as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by his glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile the world to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dominic and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand once again as brothers and sisters and we pray in the words that Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us safely offer to each other a sign of peace. Yeah.
My brothers and sisters, this is the light of all the nations, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Once again, we'll say together the act of spiritual communion for those who cannot receive communion with us today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. First of all, I want to thank those of you who attended our dinner dance last night and to all who planned and organized. It was amazing. Not last night, but Friday night. Just incredible. Uh, the food was delicious. The music was superb. And you people can dance. I mean, even you old people can dance. It was amazing to see those moves out there. Whoa, it was great. So thanks to, for making it such a memorable night. And we wore our masks and everything, so I think we was, we're okay with it. But again, a great, great experience for our parish. St. Dominic's will be offering the three-hour initial virtues safe environment class on protecting God's children. It's something that we had to do in our Catholic Church for almost 20 years now. And so if you want to serve in any way in this parish, in any Catholic church, you're supposed to attend that initial class. Uh, if, if you have done it before, then you can be recertified with a much shorter class. I think it's an hour. But this is the initial class. There's information in the bulletin. Space is limited. If you want to re uh, register for the class, please call the parish office. And again, if you've not done it before, you've got to do it. Or if it's been several years, you've got to do it again. Uh, please help us to maintain our vigilance. Uh, to protect our children. Our Queen's Care Parish nurse will be offering COVID booster shots along with flu shots every Thursday. The nurse is here from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 noon. 
And again, as our church officials have said, scientific experts, doctors, government officials, the best way for us to overcome the pandemic is to get vaccinated and now we have to get boosted because it's just this new variant. So please, 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 if you've not done either of those things, you've got to do it. We've got to get over this. Please help us out. And you can get it for free here every Thursday. Brother Thaddeus will be offering a new series, Exploring the Eucharist, it's called, Exploring the Eucharist, the heart and soul of our Catholic faith. It's for young adults, ages 18 to 39, so you 40-year-olds, you can't join. So 18 to 39 begins on January 27. We're trying, again, to reach out to those young adults, so many that no longer practice their faith. And the Eucharist is, again, it's the heart and soul, so it's, it's trying to understand what it means to believe Jesus is present in the Eucharist. There's more information in the bulletin about that. As well, we have our bereavement group called Seasons of Hope, led by Father Francis and his team. They will be beginning on January 12th. The dates and times are also in the bulletin. And also in the bulletin today and at the end of the Mass packets for you who are online is my message where I have some suggestions for our New Year's resolutions. A great time as we begin a new year to think about what we can do to make ourselves better. And there's uh, some really very practical ideas there. I didn't make them up. Somebody, I stole them from somebody else. So please check them out and make this year better than the last in your own personal life. Okay? Now, you folks, uh, if you don't know, you, you must know that our parish has a great reputation for the music in our parish, and you folks have continually lived up to that <laughs> reputation. Thank you so much. And you deserve all the credit uh, for the music today and, and ongoing, and Rudy, for all the years you've been here. But I want to also thank all of you other ministers. Uh, you know, our choir gets some attention that they deserve, but all of you who serve in this parish week after week, thank you so much, especially during this, this difficult time of year. It's wet, it's cold, it's dark, and all that, and you serve again and again. You're very inspiring. So applause for all of you. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing and say amen, please, after each of these short uh, blessings. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. amen. And since in all confidence you follow Jesus, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us glorify, let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord in our lives this whole year. Thanks be to God.